The TurboCat power brush is the most popular air driven power brush in the central vacuum industry. Uh, the design's been around for over 20 years. It's been very reliable. In fact, there's only a couple different problems you're likely to have with one of these and uh, I'd like to talk about how you can fix them. So let's turn it over. <clears throat> you can see the underside here. It's, it's a pretty simple device. Uh, the first thing that's likely to happen as you uh, use one of these is that it may stop completely. There will be no sound, no spinning, um, and what that means is something's been ingested which has jammed the turbine. So in order to re remedy that, these two latches here allow you to remove this cover. And from in there you can see the turbine I don't know how easily you can see it on the video, but this is the entrance to the turbine and everything you pick up has to go through that. So something like a wood chip or a screw or something uh, would, would get jammed in there and you'd be able to see it and fish it out. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll be able to just to work this around with your finger or spin this and whatever's in there will show itself or you may have to use a a small instrument like a small standard screwdriver or a dental pick would work well or even a steak knife if you've got nothing else around. Um, but once you're spinning again you put the cover back on and you're done. But let's say that's not your problem. Let's say your turbo cat runs just slowly. It's sluggish. It doesn't leave the lines on the carpet like it used to. Uh, you could buy a new one but more than likely it just needs to be cleaned. Uh, debris and hair and lint can build up in the bearings of the brush roll so this can look clean and if you've been keeping it clean then that's good but you'll need to take it apart to get into here and here's how we do that these three screws come out And that will allow you to remove this plate. Lifts up on the front and then pulls out. The brush roll is exposed now. The belt we can take off. The belt guard can come off. And the ends of the brush roll are kind of held in place by this furniture guard. So we can peel that back out of the way and lift. Now we have the brush roll assembly out along with the belt. Take the belt off and turn it inside out. Check the teeth for wear. These don't wear like an ordinary rubber vacuum belt. They don't ever stretch. But uh, if they're not broken, these teeth can be worn down and it really affects the ability of the turbine to transmit power to the brush roll. So check that. The belt is inexpensive and it'll make a big difference. Uh, now we're at the brush roll here. Clear the obvious lint and thread off of there. Uh, and then we're going to take and pull until the right side end cap comes off. And the left end cap doesn't come off, it remains attached to the shaft, but you can still pull the shaft out of the brush roll core. And we're going to check here for build up, clean that, clean this here. Same thing on the ends, in there, and in there. These don't really need to be lubricated, um, but if you wanted to lubricate it, you wouldn't want to use 3-in-1 oil or WD-40. Um, that'll just gum things up and it'll, it'll shorten the life. You could use a lightweight motor oil, like the 3-in-1 motor oil that comes in the blue uh, bottle. That would be safe to use. Sewing machine oil is probably a little light, but once again, lubrication in general is not really needed on these at all. When you reassemble, there's an end here that has a bevel and there's an end here that's just cored out like drilled out and the beveled end goes in the side of the shaft that has or the end cap that has these protrusions here they fit in there nicely and the other end can go on there sort of twisting to get this together again and if you notice Looking closely, there is a little arrow here 
and on the other end there's on this side it's a little R tiny little R stamped into the uh, into the metal and if we turn this around there's a tiny little arrow here and a tiny little L on this side well obviously L is for left and R is for right and L goes on the left and R goes on the right but the arrows actually need to point toward the back of the unit not toward the front um, so once we've got that the way it needs to go in we can slip the belt over hold this furniture guard out of the way and just check to make sure this hasn't spun out of position as you insert it. So that'll fit nicely in there and your furniture guard can be stretched back into place. These also can be replaced if they get worn out. Um, they're inexpensive and the way you do that is just to loosen these two screws and this will come out of its track on either side and then you can work the new one in. <clears throat> so anyway, now we have this. Uh, the belt has to twist, but it really is only designed to twist one way. If you twist it the wrong way, what will happen is this will actually run backwards. It will be running like that, and it just doesn't work all that well that way. So there's a little picture here, right in there, that tells us that the belt needs to turn this way. and we can work it onto the shaft there. Our belt guard here goes on and bottom plate these little lips catch in the slots in the base at the back and then the front just hinges down and we can put our screws in. So now this cover, in order to put this on, you want to hook the, the flared lip of it underneath this metal plate and then press the back down as you turn these latches. A lot of times this would be able to go on on top of the metal plate and you won't get a suction seal that way and the thing just won't work well. So at this point we're all put back together, you should be working well. This should spin with a lot of speed. Um, but of course it does depend on the suction of your central vac unit. So if it's not spinning well and you've gone through and serviced it, then you may want to take a look at the unit. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching.